Consider a future device in which an individual stores all his books, records, and communications, and which is mechanized so that it may be consulted with exceeding speed and flexibility. It is an enlarged, intimate supplement to his memory. Once upon a time, people could only ever dream of the extraordinary device that you were using to watch this video and that you would hardly consider extraordinary anymore. On the timeline of world history, we are a part of the online civilization. Human beings, like other organisms, have thrived in their environment through developing symbiotic relationships with surrounding species. All life forms in some way or another have cultivated the art of living together. And symbiotic relationships, I suppose, are most commonly thought of as relationships between living things. And yet for the past decade and a half, as a species, one of our most important relationships has not been with another creature, but rather with our own inventions. The evolution of the human species has to some extent surpassed nature and now depends on developing an art of living together with our machines. As our technology evolves, so do its creators. Over on my Discord, a discussion came up surrounding the nature of cyberspace and, and the role that it's playing in the evolution of human consciousness. And I wanted to extend that discussion to a broader audience because technology and cyberspace is a unique and one of the most prevalent aspects of the zeitgeist. Cyberspace seems abstract. Even the name itself is quite odd when you think about it because although space is a concept and not necessarily a tangible thing, we have no intrinsic difficulty imagining 3D spaces. In fact, we have a hard time imagining space that isn't dimensionally manifest like cyberspace. But despite the abstraction, cyberspace really, it really is just us. It's you and me right now. It is a vessel for human communication. And more significantly, it is a collection of human knowledge. Our knowledge is like water in that it is amorphous. Our use of water is very heavily dependent upon the container. The container is at times the most influential determinant in how we view the content itself. And historically, human knowledge wasn't contained digitally. It was contained in speech and then followed by the written word. And that leads us to the culture that we find ourselves in now. And with each cultural shift, there were accompanying changes to the human mind. Knowledge isn't just confined to books and stories anymore. It exists as data in the, in the infinite collective cyberspace. In fact, I would go so far as saying that, that human knowledge is more synonymous with data than it is with the brain itself. Cyberspace is a common mental geography built in turn by consensus and revolution, canon and experiment, a territory swarming with data and lies, with mind stuff and memories of nature, with a million voices and two million eyes in a silent, invisible concert to inquiry, deal making, dream sharing, and simple beholding. Cyberspace is a global consciousness that we all share, that we're all plugged into. And so the scale of all of this really is just terrifying. Our minds are shifting to absorb extensive amounts of information at unprecedented speeds. And so we run the risk of one day potentially being unable to extrapolate any meaning from all of this information. Consider the question, what good is a book if you never learn to read? What would happen to humanity if one day all of our data were made inaccessible or if it were corrupted for some reason? What becomes of society if we one day are unable to understand our own knowledge? Would, would civilization collapse? Cyberspace is in effect, is really a loss of individual consciousness, which, which can neither be qualified as good or bad. Good and bad are, are far too 
too simple to categorize such a nuanced shift in human consciousness. When we shifted from an oral culture to a literate culture, I think most people would agree that literacy is a good thing. And yet with the advent of literacy, we still faced significant losses. For instance, in an oral culture, meaning was much more accessible because the knowledge keeper was always available at the time of transmission. In an oral culture, meaning was the most prevalent part of a message because if it wasn't, then it would run the risk of not being able to survive in human memory. To an extent, literacy renders survival superfluous. In an oral culture, if something survived, its survival gave indication of significance, gave indication of meaning. Things survived for a reason versus now you can contrast that to modern day in which we can go digging through the archives of, I don't know, someone's Twitter, let's say, and figure out what they were eating for lunch on November 3rd, 2008. Record keeping really gives no indication of significance. I believe it was Socrates who was highly skeptical of widespread literacy because he feared that it would result in a loss of, of wisdom, which really, in effect, is a loss of meaning, right? We have all of this excess information. Information doesn't necessarily equate to knowledge. It doesn't necessarily equate to wisdom. Cyberspace has circumvented the limitations of the human body, of the mind, of memory, but we're building something that I don't think people realize they are a part of and is a part of them. The biggest concern surrounding cyberspace really is the lack of awareness that consciousness exists outside of its source. The brain created cyberspace so that the brain could live outside of itself. It's, it's almost spiritual in its manifestation. Unity becomes plurality because it wants to gaze and to be gazed at, to know and to be known, to love and to be loved, at which while itself remaining unity embraces itself as multiplicity, of the I which begets a you, of the primal self which transforms itself into the world. The digital revolution is in many ways a a spiritual revolution. It's reconstructing the nature of reality, or perhaps it's not reconstructing. Perhaps it is revealing reality. Perhaps we previously lacked the perceptual sense to, to understand a reality in which physical objects are less foundational than informational objects, which aren't even objects to begin with, at least not in the physical sense. We're shifting to an immaterial world, we've created a collective intelligence. And I think the risk there is that we've created this collective intelligence and yet we still don't see ourselves as a as a collective. Cyberspace is a global tribe and yet we exist in our um, separate corners of the world believing ourselves to be individuals while we integrate with the best and the worst minds of humanity. It's very difficult to have selective exposure in cyberspace. And so you're you're being exposed to everything that exists. You're consuming everything that could possibly exist whether you like it or not. That is all I have to say on the topic. Please let me know your thoughts on the on the evolution of technology, what role do you think it is playing on the human mind and on the world as a whole? As always, thank you for watching. Thank you to my lovely patrons. If you enjoy what I'm doing here on YouTube, then please consider joining me on Patreon and joining my Discord.